This is Howard J. Smith back in ABC News election headquarters with Barbara Walters and Harry Reasoner. The national presidential vote count is very young and green yet. Two percent of the precincts have reported in throughout the nation. The results are forward with 50 percent and probably a little less than, a little more than 50 percent. Carter with, uh, with 50 percent. Also, it's changing as you watch. In electoral votes, Carter leads with 38 electoral votes to Ford's 13 electoral votes, but as we pointed out often and will point out again, the early results are bound to be pro-Carter results. It's the same pattern that was followed in the Kennedy-Nixon uh, election in 1960 when in the first 10 results it looked as though Kennedy had swept the race, but by the, evening, by the evening's end the race was very close indeed. Uh, Harry Reasoner has an individual state result. If you remember in that case of uh, Kennedy and Nixon in 1960, Howard, there was no evening's end. At about 3 a.m., Pierre Salinger came out and said that Senator Kennedy was not going to claim victory that night. And it could be like that tonight. One of the reasons Jimmy Carter has that early electoral vote lead, 38 to 13, is that ABC News is now able to project him the winner in South Carolina by a comfortable margin. South Carolina had been believed to be leaning toward Carter, but a comfortable margin probably sounds pretty good to him. Barbara? Well, Georgia has already gone to uh, Jimmy Carter. ABC made that projection, and that's no surprise because, of course, Georgia is the home state of the Carters. And in Georgia now, in Plains, Georgia, is Jimmy Carter's 78-year-old mother, Lillian Carter, and she is with Jim Kincaid. And I'll bet she doesn't feel 78. I'll bet she feels about uh, 21 with all the excitement tonight. How do you feel, Miss Lillian? How is the family? I feel wonderful, Barbara. It's just so nice to hear your voice. Thank you. I feel so confident. Have you seen your son recently, and can you tell us yes. what the family is doing? I saw him this afternoon down here, about two hours ago, and they in Atlanta. I'm staying in Plains. Miss Lillian, why did you decide to stay in Plains rather than go to Atlanta? Oh, well, the Plains is my home. I'm never crazy about going to any city. I just like a small town. Jimmy asked me the same thing. Why don't you go to Atlanta? But these people here have been so wonderful to us. They've given them money and their time, and I think this is my place. You've been listening to some of the returns coming in. What yeah. do you think of what you heard so far? I didn't hear too many of them. I was on, en route here, mm -hmm. and I didn't hear too many. What are the returns? Well, we've been hearing a, a, a significant uh, lead, if we can yeah. call it that, in these very, very early going in the electoral vote count. Yeah. But uh, there are a lot yeah. of other conflicting figures. Well, I enjoy anything is, if it's for Jimmy. If it's for Ford, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lillian, before we end this interview, I would like you to convince my colleagues in New York that I work very hard when I come to play. <laughs> he doesn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> he just sits around and does nothing. No, he's a very hard worker. He, it's, it's hard for him to find me when he comes down here, but I think he's a very hard worker, and I think he needs a raise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I doubt if that'll happen. Uh, <laughs> Miss Lillian, you have said that you will not go to Washington if your son does become president. You will absolutely not move there? No, no Ma, Barbara. I'm a small town. I'm a hick. Do you know what a hick is, Barbara? <laughs> yes, yeah. I do know what a hick is. Well, I was come from kind of a small town myself, not quite as small as Plain. Not as small How do you think your son, who is a, a small towner, who uh, may be a hick, uh, is going to do in that big city? He's going to do all right because he's progressed. Uh, slowly from being a hick to a large town. I think it'd be great. Barbara, I think he's going to be the best president we've ever had. Well, the returns will tell this evening what does happen. In any yes. event, we thank you, Miss Lillian, for thank being with us. And Jim Kincaid, it's been a pleasure to have you on with us. Thank you, Barbara. It's been a part of the evening. Thank you. Howard? Uh, Harry Reasoner gave the results of the South Carolina vote just a moment ago. I think it's a matter of trivial interest that uh, Jimmy Carter's name appears as Jimmy Carter on the ballot in every state in the Union and the District of Columbia, but not in South Carolina. South Carolina law requires that his name go on the ballot with his full Christian name, uh, uh, James Earl Carter. Junior. In Washington, Senator Robert Dole, the vice presidential candidate on the Republican ticket, is standing by with Herbert Kaplow. Herb, would you come in? On the uh, patio of the Watergate apartment complex where Senator Dole lives, Senator, what's your theory as to why the turnout seems to be so heavy? Well, we had good weather, and I think there was a great deal of interest. Uh, maybe the debates, uh, I'm not certain, but they're, uh, we'll wait and see what the final percentage is. What did you think was the primary issue that you had to contend with? 
I think perhaps the economy and uh, unemployment as far as their issues, uh, our strength uh, was in the president's efforts uh, again in the economy and also the peace issue. I think Howard has a question for us. Huh? Herbert, Time magazine suggested that the man who wins this uh, contest, the presidential candidate who wins, will be the one who makes the, the next to last mistake. Whom does the senator think made the next to last mistake? <laughs> Well, I really don't know. I think perhaps it's a little early. I may think of uh, something before long, but uh, right now it's uh, too early to tell. Uh, mistakes were made, of course, on both sides. I don't know who made the last one or the next to last one. You know, Senator, in line with that, when we were up in Oregon the other day, a Republican there showed me a poll in which one of the findings was when people were asked why they were most for President Ford, the answer was he was, quote, the lesser of two evils. When they were asked why they were most for Carter, the answer was it was time for a change. Well, I think there, there may be some, uh, I didn't see that poll, but, uh, uh, and I don't, I think President Ford, of course, was the best choice because of the experience he had and his demonstrated leadership and that he was uh, a man of unquestioned honesty and integrity. Uh, I didn't see the particular poll in Oregon. Did you run into uh, these signs of public skepticism about these two people? Oh, I think so. I think you go up and down the fence or uh, after a speech, uh, uh, it was there. I think there was uh, some unrest, uh, some restlessness about uh, the candidates, uh, as there always is. I don't know any more this year than ever. Well, you, of course, have Watergate hanging over uh, the Republican Party, although you tried to uh, divorce the party from it. Well, Watergate uh, is our burden, as I've said before, and uh, it may cut... Uh, it apparently was uh, cutting some because Mondale used it almost on a daily basis. We had all, on the other hand, uh, uh, strength and peace and uh, a, a very uh, man of great character in President Ford. So I think we're going to win the election. Why did most of your campaigning seem to be among friendly audiences? Well, that was uh, somewhat our, not our strategy, but we felt, first of all, we needed to bring Republicans together uh, our convention, of course, followed theirs by several weeks. Uh, there was just a bit of disunity. Uh, we wanted to rev our troops up and get them to work, and uh, we think we've succeeded in that. It's early in the evening now, but is there any bellwether state you're looking toward? I don't know. Some indicate that North Carolina may be a key. Uh, it's a very close, uh, also my wife's home state, but uh, uh, that if Carter doesn't win big in Massachusetts, uh, I'm not... We want to go to Ann Compton now for a result in West Virginia. Howard, it appears that West in West Virginia, it is no surprise, Jay Rockefeller will be uh, taking, according to ABC News projection, will be taking the state of West Virginia by a wide margin. There's only a tiny vote in so far, but 67% of the vote over Cecil Underwood wouldn't be at all surprising. Rockefeller, of course, tried to run uh, four years ago hadn't quite shed the image of uh, an Easterner, a, a carpetbagger, although he says he had been in the state for uh, some 13 years. Rockefeller would be one of the youngest governors of the state, a more progressive voice than uh, perhaps some of the past governors. Rockefeller has spent a lot of his own money, well over a million dollars for the campaign that uh, is costing him about two and a half million. He will be running over Cecil Underwood, who uh, 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, was elected as the youngest governor ever in West Virginia. Underwood has tried several other times to run for governor and senator, but has been defeated. And it appears, according to ABC News projection, that uh, he will lose again tonight. Uh, also in Indiana, ABC's projection has Otis Bowen, the incumbent Republican, hanging on to that state house over Larry Conrad, who is a protege of Senator Birch Bayh. Harry? Thank you, Ann. We should talk a little bit about how we do what we're doing tonight. As you've noted, we've made several projections and we will project winners in each state shortly after the polls close. Here's how that works. We've selected some 3,000 election precincts across the country as being typical of certain categories of voters. And tonight in each of those key precincts, there are volunteers from the League of Women Voters, the same organization that sponsors the presidential debates. And as soon as the polls close in the state, the League volunteers telephone the early vote counts to other volunteers that you see here at our computer center in Connecticut. Past voting histories are already in the computer. When there's enough information, our decision desk projects the winners. Coming up next, more of our continuous election night coverage 
right after this. We're back now. We want to bring you uh, some of the results of races that are too soon to call. One of them, which is very interesting, is in Florida. Now, Florida has been uh, predicted that it will go for Jimmy Carter. At this point, though, that's, it's quite close. With 4% of the precincts in, Carter has 53% 53, 53 of the vote, and Ford has 47%. It is too soon to call that, but uh, it shows how, how close, how many of the races still are, and uh, it is predicted will continue to be all night long. When we saw Senator Dole a few moments ago, I was thinking not just of him, but of Senator Mondale. And how's this for cool? Senator Mondale had said went to the dentist this afternoon that he had a. He said he'd been talking a great deal, and he figured this was a good day to have some work done on his teeth. And uh, at this point, we're waiting to see uh, uh, Jimmy Carter in plain. Is he, he's in plain shorts. Right? I suppose this would be the first day in. Uh in a couple of months when uh, the presidential and vice presidential candidates didn't really have all that much to do and a good time to go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. You always wonder how they get that in. Once your president is all right, the dentist comes the to dentist you. Comes to the dentist comes to you. Everything comes to you. He doesn't like to. My dentist is the president's dentist, and he likes to do work in his own, in his own office. office. He says the uh, tools are out of date in the White House. <laughs> I have a correction to make. I said that in South Carolina, James Earl Carter Jr. was the name on the ballot, the only state in the union. Well, James Earl Carter Jr. made a special plea to the state legislature in South Carolina, so they let him put the name Jimmy Carter on the ballot, too. So he's Jimmy Carter everywhere. Now, in Atlanta, Jimmy Carter is uh, approaching the Omni Hotel in Atlanta, and uh, we hope to have a report from there in just a moment. That's part of an Omni setter a World Congress Center, they've got a con convention hall, they've got a hotel, they've got a, a couple of sports arenas. It's uh, part of what has made Atlanta such an exciting city for contractors and builders and convention goers in the last few years. Probably for staffs of presidents if Carter wins tonight. Here comes Mr. Governor Carter. Uh, since he's already apparently checked in, he will not be carrying his suit bag and suitcase tonight <laughs> as he has throughout the campaign. He hasn't sounded as hoarse as President Ford. President Ford could barely talk tonight, maybe because Jimmy Carter's been talking somewhat softer. Maybe it's better amplifying system. He has not been on the, had that voice breakdown. I think the uh, hoarseness of the voice is related directly to the Governor amount Carter, you have to catch up. You, how do you feel about the turnout so far? Well, I think the turnout's very exciting, and it's not a surprise to me. In the last uh, couple of weeks, there's been a tremendous demonstration of uh, fervent interest in the campaign with uh, the size of the crowds and also with the intensity of feeling. And I'm very grateful at the large turnout. I think that's uh, something that works in my favor. Do you think the turnout indicates that perhaps the polls were al wrong all along and that it's going to be a bigger vote for you? Are you going to win by a big margin or is it going to be close? Know. have to wait and see. I don't know. You are heard in uh, Kentucky, Alabama, and Georgia right now. Are you very satisfied with that? Satisfied with those three states, yes. What, are you afraid that you're... Uh... The governor didn't get that question. Well, that was David Snell questioning Governor Jimmy Carter, the candidate for the presidency, who is at present doing very well, leading in the electoral vote, though not much in the popular vote. The popular vote at present, with 3% of the nation's precincts in, reporting in, is 51% for Carter, 49% for President Ford. And the electoral vote is uh, 38 electoral votes for Carter to 13 for the president. But once again, we warn you, the early returns are bound to be pro-Carter returns. It was interesting just now to see uh, Rosalind Carter. We're going to have to learn uh, several new pronunciations. We already have. We've learned Rosalind, not Rosalind. Rosalind's easy. You'll, come, you'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah. Coming up next, uh, more of our continuous election night coverage right after this. Well, we're now returning with 3% of the popular vote in. Uh, Jimmy Carter holding a narrow lead over Gerald Ford, 51% to 48%, just a little over a million each. Howard? Well, we have another state projection. The state of West Virginia has gone Democratic once more, as it usually does. West Virginia, with its six electoral votes, is projected to go to Jimmy Carter in tonight's election. 
It's no wonder because everything was working far quarter there. Uh, Senator Byrd, the powerful senator from West Virginia, Jay Rockefeller, who may be elected governor tonight, both supported him. The UMW, the mine workers, support him. It's a democratic New Deal state, and so he had everything going for him. There are some. There is a result, a very important result, in uh, in in another state nearby in the Senate race, and Frank Reynolds has that. As Howard in Virginia, the independent Senator Harry Byrd. Uh, according to ABC News projection of the available vote at this time, will be the victor in his campaign for re-election over Elmo Zumwalt, a former sailor. He was actually chief of naval operations, and this was his first try for political office. Senator Byrd continues the tradition of the uh, Byrd representation in Washington from the state of Virginia. He is actually an independent. He's so listed politically on the ballot, he votes with the Democrats in organizing the Senate, and then some Democrats believe he votes with the Republicans on every measure that comes before the Senate. But at any rate, according to our projection, he has or will be the victor in his race for re-election. We've also earlier projected uh, the victory tonight of Richard Luger, the former mayor of Indianapolis, over Vance Hartke, the Democratic incumbent from the state of Indiana. And ABC News, quite some time ago, projected, too, uh, the victory of Lawton Childs from the state of Florida. By a wide margin, he's the Democratic incumbent over uh, Dr. John Grady, the Republican candidate. One interesting thing about this was that uh, uh, Childs, the incumbent, actually challenged his opponent to a series of televised debates. The opponent, uh, Dr. Grady, is a very forceful speaker, but Childs wasn't afraid of him, and he wanted everybody to understand that Grady is a member of the National Council of the John Birch Society. That's something that Grady's proud of, and so he didn't attempt to hide it, and apparently uh, it didn't help him very much in the state of Florida. Barbara? We're all talking about Florida. Florida, one of the Big Ten states with 17 electoral votes. ABC projects that it has gone to Jimmy Carter. It has been a close race. It was expected to be a close race. It would have been an upset had it gone to Ford. 17 electoral votes. Florida projected for Jimmy Carter. Coming up next, we'll have more of our continuous election coverage. We'll bring you all the reports right after this. So far in the presidential race, Jimmy Carter has taken one, two, three, four, five, six states, and President Ford only one state. But no, two states. I believe Indiana and Florida. That's two states. No, no Florida went to Carter. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, and the, right. the interesting thing about that is that uh, uh, while we expected Jimmy Carter to take those southeastern states first and jump into a lead, he has already taken five more states than the Democratic nominee did in 1972. Uh, when George McGovern took one state in the District of Columbia. And he... I know it was confusing since I just reported Florida. What was going through my mind is that many people have said that Florida is really like two states, that the northern part is uh, votes like the north, and the southern part more or less votes like the other, other way around. The southern part votes like the south. Help me. The southern <laughs> part votes like the north, okay. and the northern part votes like the south. Okay, right. now I've got it right. And that's the, uh, that's the national election story at 52 minutes past the hour.